I think it's safe to say that Brian Kelly is fitting in just fine down in Baton Rouge. In his first year with LSU, he led the Tigers to a 10-4 record and won the SEC West, made the SEC championship game in his first year with the program. And then last year, the Tigers went 10-3, earned another bowl victory. But the season was kind of viewed as a disappointment considering LSU was viewed as a college football playoff team in the preseason. So what does LSU have to do in 2024 to reach the college football playoff? What do the Tigers have to do to reach and meet their expectations? That's what we're here to talk about today. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today to talk some LSU football. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below, including our website, thegridironexpert.com. We've got tons of exclusive content down there for you to enjoy you do not want to miss out on that, guys, because the season, first off, never dies here at our channel. Secondly, the official start of the season is going to be here before we know it. We've got tons of content coming your way. We've got prediction season coming your way. It's our official game-by-game -game prediction for every single college football team. You do not want to miss out on that. That's all the more reason to subscribe. Hit that notification button. Check out our website. Everything down in the description below for you to get you ready for college football. So let's take a look at LSU. Again, 10-3. and three. Last year, for most teams across the country, that is a very successful season. For LSU, I think some would say it was a successful season, but they can't help but feel that there was a lot left to be desired. When you have the Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback, when you have the number one offense in the entire country at your disposal, you go, why did we go just 10-3? and three? Why wasn't there an SEC title berth? Why wasn't there a college football playoff berth? And the answer really is simple. It's not really... Uh, you know, a profound, you know, answer here. It's It was the defense. It was the defense that ruined LSU last year and prevented them from maybe achieving greatness. And that's what they're going to have to do this year is fix that defense if they want to make the new 12-team playoff. You look at last season, guys. LSU, their three losses, who were they to? They were to Florida State, Ole Miss, and Alabama. None of those bad opponents by any means. None of those bad losses by any means. Florida State went undefeated, won the ACC before losing to Georgia in the Orange Bowl. Ole Miss won the Peach Bowl, 11-win season for the Rebels. Alabama was the college football playoff semifinalist, nearly took down Michigan in the Rose Bowl. So none of those losses are bad. But what hurts for LSU is that all of those games were winnable. A one-possession loss to Ole Miss, a two-touchdown loss to Alabama, then a blowout loss to Florida State, uh, where, honestly, the LSU offense did struggle at times, believe it or not. But the problem was, in those three games, LSU allowed 142 points. 142 points. It's an average of 47.3 points per game in each of their three losses. That was atrocious. The season as a whole defensively for LSU was atrocious. They ranked 105th in the nation in total defense, allowing 416.6 yards per game. That was the second worst defense in the entire SEC. Who did they beat? Vanderbilt. Really, most teams are going to beat Vanderbilt in almost every statistical category in the SEC. So LSU had the second worst defense in the conference, only ahead of Vanderbilt. They were 115th in the nation in passing defense allowing their secondary to get torched game by game, allowing over 255 passing yards per game, only better than seven other Power 5 programs. And they were 85th in the country versus the run, allowing 161 rushing yards per game. The reason LSU thrived so much last year was because of how good their offense was. The defense didn't really do their job, but the, the less they did their job, the more the offense was out on the field, and not many teams could stop Jaden Daniels and this LSU offense. Not many teams could figure that out, and that's why the Tigers did win 10 games. That's why, with a defense this bad, they weren't a 7-8 win team. It's because the offense bailed them out time and time again. The defense, though, of course, was so atrocious that Brian Kelly had no choice but to get rid of their defensive coordinator and Matt House and then go out to hire Missouri's defensive coordinator and Blake Baker. Some people would say that wasn't a great hire. If you say that, I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you're living under a rock because it was a phenomenal hire. Not only was Blake Baker phenomenal at Missouri this last season as defensive coordinator of the Tigers, but he was also has LSU ties, was the linebackers coach for LSU back in 2021. As last season, Blake Baker led Missouri to the 33rd ranked defense in the entire country, allowing just 336.1 yards per game, good for fifth in the entire SEC. Fifth in the SEC compared to LSU's, was that 13? Soon to be maybe 15 when we had two more teams here this season, Oklahoma and Texas. But 33rd in the nation 
at Missouri, and the Tigers won 11 games and the Cotton Bowl over Ohio State. So that's going to be a, the, the caveat here, right? I am not concerned for LSU offensively. Yes, I know Jaden Daniels gone, is gone. Malik Neighbors is gone. A lot of good talent is gone for LSU offensively. Mike Denbrock is gone off to Notre Dame. We understand that. So you've got a new defensive coordinator in Blake Baker. You've got a new offensive coordinator in Joe Sloan, who was promoted from within from offensive coordinator, where the major reason why Jaden Daniels played as well as he did, Brian Kelly recognized that, promoted him to OC. I think the offense is going to be fine. And we've seen a lot over the last couple of years, we've seen a lot of of playing time, meaningful playing time, from Garrett Nussmeyer. I think a lot of us have enjoyed what we've seen from him. I think he's going to thrive offensively. LSU's offense is not what I'm worried about. It's the defense that I'm concerned about. But surely to God, it cannot be any worse than it was last year. And I don't believe it will be with new management, with a new staff, uh, and really just completely revamping that side of the ball. You take a look at what LSU's up against this year. Again, this is a team that last year would have been a college football playoff team had had it been a 12-team playoff. I believe that, or at least would have been on the fringe, right on the outside looking in if they didn't get in. You look at the schedule this year, they're going to get a great opportunity to see what that defense is made of in week one when they take on USC out in Las Vegas. First game of the year, go all the way to Vegas to play. Lincoln Riley, one of the best offensive minds in the game. Miller Moss, who had an amazing debut with the Trojans in their bowl game against Louisville. All of that's coming their way in week one. So Blake Baker's got a very tall task on his hands. Very, very tough task on his hands in the first game of the year. We're going to see what LSU is capable of. How does their defense fare in this game? Has it improved drastically, or are they going to get torched by USC? That's kind of the story that I'm watching out for in week one. If they beat USC, though, there is a very good chance that the Tigers do start 5-0. and The schedule really isn't all that bad. Intriguing game against UCLA in there, a road game against South Carolina in there, but not all that bad. Then the key stretch comes. We've broken this down in our LSU schedule preview. They did make our preseason top 25, so make sure you go take a look at that. But they play Ole Miss, Arkansas, Texas A&M, and Alabama in four consecutive games. Of course, a bye week before the Alabama game. But those are tough games there. Got an Ole Miss team that's Led by another great offensive mind in Lane Kiffin, Ole Miss team that dropped 55 on LSU last year, 55-49 game. Arkansas nearly beat LSU in Death Valley, dropped 31 points on the Tigers. And keep in mind, Arkansas's offense was atrocious last year, still dropped 31 on LSU, and now the Hogs led by Bobby Petrino as their new offensive coordinator. You've got A&M under new management in Mike Elko, and then Alabama, also new management in Kalen DeBoer, but... Alabama dropped 42 on LSU with Jalen Milrow as their quarterback, and he does return this season. So those four games, going to be very, very telling. LSU still going to be a favor in the majority of the games that they play this year. LSU still entering the year as a college football playoff team with college football playoff expectations. Look, with the 12-team playoff, 10 wins is going to get you in. At least it should. You go 10-2 and two and say LSU's losses are to, if they go 10-2, and two, say their losses are to Alabama and you know, Ole Miss or some I don't know who it would be to. We're not doing predictions today, right? But 10-2 with quality losses, they're going to have a very good chance to get in there, right? They are expected to be a team in the 12-team playoff. They are expecting to be there. Anything less than that would be viewed as disappointment. The uh, You know, with the playoff expanding, it's allowing for more teams to join in on the fun. It's not as difficult to get in to have that shot at national title. LSU is a program that expects to contend for national titles year in and year out. This year, despite the changes on both sides of the ball, it is no exception. Brian Kelly has thrived each of the last two years in Baton Rouge. I would expect nothing less in year three, but the defense, the defense, which was their downfall last year, their defense, which is what held them back from being a playoff team last year, that will be, once again, the X factor this year, and whether or not LSU is competing for a national title or if, once again, they fall just short and just go to another average bowl game. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Grid Iron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and check out everything down in the description below. Our website, thegridironexpert.com, is there. Our mailing address to send us some of your team's gear is there. Of course, we do have our LSU helmet back here proudly on display. But do not miss out on all the content that we have for you down in the description and coming your way over the coming months as we get closer and closer to the start of this college football season. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert. Yeah.